all the things that Point Guard needs, the comfort with the coach, the trust from his teammates, all that compared to where he is now. Just can you kind of describe the differences in this? I, th I just think with X and him coming in, he kind of was, he was a new kid on the block. Um, obviously, you can't lead a team that you don't know, so when he kind of got to know us and what we're about, um, he started taking more leadership roles, and I think that's a big thing that he's done this year. Is he's a leader on the court, on and off the court. He's been doing the right things, and so for him, um, just getting back out there and ready to play, I know he's eager to play, so I think it's going to be huge. Is it, I mean, we asked about kind of the schematic side of, of the evolution, especially as you guys really found another gear offensively last season. Was that maybe at the same time that you sort of reflect that comfort that he had in being Absolutely. more of a leader, more vocal, more commanding of a presence? Yeah, I think that even the last, him and Race really took over the last four or five games before the Big Ten tournament when I was kind of in a slump. And then when I started to get better, X continued to play at that level. And then obviously when two or three guys on our team are playing at such a high level and then our defense is playing the way that we're supposed to be, it's we're really hard to beat. And then I think that's what happened. So. That's what I mean. I'll be with that. Everybody's way. But, I mean, how much can he open up now? He's got more comfort. He, he says, you know, by his own admission that, He's a lot more comfortable when coach goes up there and starts freelancing, drawing plays, and asking more of him. How much more does that open up for this offense, this team, but this offense in particular, how comfortable he is now? Yeah, the point guard, he's, he's, the, he's the spearhead of, of everything we do. So with him being comfortable, we got to make sure that he's on board and he's ready. And when he's on board and he's ready, we're, we're attempting to be. So. You mentioned you might, you might play some of the four this year. How, how, how kind of would that, would that play out? Um, just with Logan, the way that Logan's been playing, he's been playing really well. Obviously, if Race gets into foul trouble, we can trust Logan to come in. I'll um, so move over to the four. I've done a little bit of practice playing against each other. So um, I think it's going to be huge for us being able to space the floor for me in general and shooting the ball. Obviously, I'm going to do that at the five or four because our offense is interchangeable. But um, it's going to be huge. Um, I think Logan's going to actually provide a lot for us this year. Um, he's been playing really well. So. Tell us would you be playing the? <laughs> Tell us more about Logan. Logan. Like this is we obviously didn't see very much of him yeah. at all last year. Race was just saying you guys could push him around. Yeah. What's different? When did you know? Okay, well, Logan came to play. Well, the thing with Logan is that last year, like it was every other week, he was sick, and so he was about 220 pounds, mm -hmm. and he just could never gain weight. And then even that in May, he got his tonsils out, so he was like 215. And then at the end of the summer, all of a sudden he was 245, and I was like. What's going on? So <laughs> he put on some weight, and I'm trying to move him back, and he's just, just holding ground. And I'm like, all right, all right. And, but he's been he's been playing really hard. He's been running the floor really hard, um, getting rebounds, and making good post moves. And so, if he just can be solid like that, um, I expect to see him play. So, now, can, are you maybe going to play some four when you're on the floor with race as well? Yeah, I think that with our offense, obviously it's the first big down, and so. And then it's ball screen, interchange, pick and pop. And Coach Coach Wilson doesn't really care what I do now, and so he gave me the green lights to do whatever. So I'm just gonna it's just to be whatever the defense gives us, basically. What What do you want your game to look like this year? Like if you could at the end of the year, I mean, if you could draw up how you play this year, what things would you do really well? Um, obviously, with Coach Woodson, he wants he still wants the emphasis to be inside out, and so that's a big thing. Obviously, that's our bread and butter. But the showcasing more of my perimeter skills. I think this year, in general, I think uh, with, uh, when we're scrimmaging a lot more, I'm bringing the ball up the court. I'm making plays in the open, and, and I think that's going to be huge for us because uh, I'm faster than most bigs. So if I get the rebound to go, then they're already trailing me. Then someone's going to have to help, and then I can hit shooters. So I think that's going to be huge playing in transition as well. If, if you look back, I guess at someone last year and said, "Okay, these are opportunities I could have taken a three, didn't." I guess oh, are, are there a lot of those, and, and do you see them now? Absolutely. I've, I've watched a few games and with regard to me at the free throw run. So when I do that this year, I just got to let it fly. Obviously, with my confidence, I've been shooting the ball really, really well here in practice. And so I just got to keep getting repetition. You're also one of the team's best offensive rebounders. So being out on the perimeter, how, how are you going to balance that? Like, you know, are you going to still go for offensive rebounds and oh, risk it and beat the other way? Or how, how does that work? I'll, I'll shoot. I'll shoot them. Uh, but I, I have faith in race. If race is down there, he'll, he'll get some offensive huh? rebounds. This what are your expectations in the locker room, just in terms of get, having guys you know know what's expected of them, and also just the bigger picture of you're going to be picked to maybe win the Big Ten and, and you have all these high expectations. Uh, just how, do, as a leader in the locker room, how do you help manage all that? Um, I just got to just keep everyone level-headed. You can't get too high. You can't get too low. Obviously, with um, who we have coming in with our freshmen and everyone that we're bringing back. 
it's going to be a great year, a great season, but we've got to take it one day at a time. So we're going to take it one practice and one game. So we can't get too ahead of ourselves and talk about Big Ten championships, national championships. we got to take it one win at a time, and that's what we're going to do. So. What do you think Jalen Hurts would be able to come out for? It's really cool. You know, they went back to back. Absolutely. What are you seeing from how, how good is he? Uh, Jalen is he's ridiculous. He's 6'5 point guard. He's crafty with the ball. His mid-range is on point. Um, he's really he's really mature for his age. I really think that will be uh, he'll only be here for one year. And that's just me. But um, he's a really, really good player. And um, obviously he's expected to start. Uh, but he, him and even the other three other freshmen that came in and they're really, really mature for their age and how they play. So I think it's huge for us because they're bringing a spark that we didn't have on this team last year. So I think it's going to make it really Trace, the day that you sorry, the day that you announced that you were coming back to IU, we saw that Twitter interaction between you and Armando Baycott. I'm just curious, what's your guys' history? What's your relationship like? And what is that matchup going to mean to you? So me and Armando, we go back and we played each other against each other in AU. Um, we were always roommates at camps. Um, me, him, and Cole Anthony. We always played Super Smash Bros. Cole would always destroy us. He would be a two-on-one. So, but me and Amanda, we're, we're really good friends. Um, he's a really good basketball player. Obviously, trying to get that game, and then we got it. So I think that's going to be really fun. But he's coming in our house, and so that yeah, we got something for him. So. I feel like your styles of play are just so like so similar. So what do you think you have to do to get the best of him in that matchup? Um, I think with Armando, his rebounding. I think he's a really, really So uh, boxing him out, always knowing where he is on the floor. When the shot goes up, it's going to be huge. He runs in transition. He sets really good ball screens as well. So being up and ready to guard that is going to be big for me as well. So, uh, But overall, he's a great player. So I can't wait to. What all stands out to you about Malik? Malik? Yeah, just, it, just, it seems like he has a pretty advanced yes. skill set. He can play inside now. I mean, just when, you, when you're dealing with him, the footwork inside, but also the perimeter, yeah, just what stands out to you about So the big thing with play. Malik, Malik came in and he, yeah, he's about 6'8", but he was already a, a Big Ten body, so he was coming in, dribbling the ball up the court. And me and Race were like, how are we guarding this dude? And he was shooting the ball. He was a really good handle, really tight handle. And so the first week or so, he was killing everyone. Like, we couldn't guard him. And so we had to kind of figure out his moves and what he did. But he's a really, really solid player. He has really, really good footwork. Um, we're going to just continue to have him under our wing and just get him ready to play because he's going to make, have a lot of significant minutes as well. What are the things you think you have to teach him? I guess, what, I mean, he's, he's, he comes in pretty well school, but what, what's the next step he has to take? Um, I just think, I think for him, it's it's not really offensively. I think his offensive game is there. It's more on the defensive end on the floor. Um, but that's, that's going to be with all freshmen. Um, so I'm um, just trying to help him learn tendencies, help him with defensive schemes, and have, helping him be in the right spot. So that's going to be big. But once he gets that figured out, he's going to be ready to go. We always ask the, uh, you about your it? shooting, but I'm curious, when you talk to NBA people, is is that what they say, or do you hear a, a whole different kind of conversation when you talk to them? Um, it's just, it's really just, it's not even that they want to see me shoot 10 threes a game. It's just one, they just want to know that I can't shoot them, basically. Just maybe the one three a game or a mid-range shot here or there. I just want to see my mechanics, because I really haven't just shot them. All, so um, I've done it in practice. I think at this pro day, I'm going to shock a lot of people, because the way I have been shooting the ball, here in practice as of lately, it's, it's been really well, and so you just got to keep getting repetition from this. What, what other aspects of your game do they give you feedback on that they'd like to see you take to another level? Um, I think that the biggest thing for me is just they it's all around that. I think that it's pretty pretty set in stone how I am, how I play with my motor. Um, they know I can catch and finish lobs. Um, they know I'm really good with my back around the basket, maybe doing a little bit more face up, um, and then obviously taking the ball in transition, showing my vision a little bit outside of the back to the basket is what they've been to. So then how much of playing the four so then how much of playing the four this year is about the next level for you? Um really playing the four, um, it's really just it is what it is. I did it my freshman year, so um, I'm kinda used to it. Guarding I think guarding four men is gonna be pretty good just so they can see my versatility on defense as well. A what was the deal? four in this what, was, what was the trash talk like between yeah. you you and Mondo after that PGM game? Uh, there was just a low. Oh, after the Pichon game. Yeah. Well, they got to it against us. We uh-huh. Keon Keon was, was out, and so it, it is what it is. I tried to hold my own, but they were undefeated at the time, and them boys were we came to play. So True. True. It, it is what it is. But he, he wasn't really talking that much. So they kind of knew what was up. And there was a little bit of chatter, uh, Jordan Brand and stuff like that nature. So <laughs> you talked about just like wanting to get Indian basketball back on top. Why, why is like, this program so 
Um, it's important to me, um, obviously coming in here my freshman year, not really having any expectations, um, just being kind of the new kid on the block, not really knowing about how historic this program is. I mean, I knew about it a little bit. I knew about the championships, but I didn't really know the in-depth details of how, how important it is to college basketball. And so um, just learning that over the last three years and then with Coach Woodson coming in and kind of explaining the history to us, um, it's really huge. And then finally just having a national relevance again, um, just being, like as Scoop said, the hunted, um, it's huge not only for us but college basketball because a lot of people say when Indiana is good, college basketball is great. How do you think you've personally grown from your freshman year to this year now that it's your last year, last fall in Bloomington as a student? I think the biggest way that I've grown is as a leader. As a, as a, leader, um, a lot more vocal, especially with the young guys trying to make sure that they're on track. Just make sure everyone's good, but just the leadership aspect. I feel like my freshman and sophomore year, I didn't really have that. And then last year, I kind of stepped into that role because Coach Woodson forced me to, and so I thought it was big for me. And um, now, just doing it on my own, having race there as well, is going to be going to be huge for us. And I think that we can lead this team to a lot of good things. How long did it take to be comfortable doing that? At what point did you feel like comfortable calling people out, being vocal, telling people what to do? How think, long did that take? I think it took me a little while, honestly. Uh, because at the same time with Coach Woodson coming in, and then we had four or five new guys coming in, so I didn't really know them that well. And then you have the class, the freshman class coming in, so we only had about seven or eight guys on our team that I knew that I was comfortable with. And so being able to just have a new team and just trying to step into that role as a leader and then not knowing kind of everyone's antics, how they how they play, how they respond to certain things um, is big. And so it probably took me three or four months, but by January, I felt like I was pretty good. I could talk to the guys and know who I could talk to in what way and shape and form to get through to them. So. You were a lot more, I mean, having the confidence of doing it now, how much more of a sort of head start do you kind of feel like you have in this season? Where you're going to say, like, like, I, people are going to look to me and I've got to just do Yeah, that. absolutely. I think that now I can I can get on anyone on the team and they're going to listen to me because they know what I'm about and they know that well, I'm trying to do the right things, so not only for us, but our team. It's going to be big for us, but I think everyone else is on board. I think Grace is on board. we got people like Scoop, Anthony, Will. They're all trying to do their part as well to try to help our team as well. So I think that everyone holds, holds each other accountable, and that's that's really great because player-led teams have to get a lot more out of each other than what the coach is doing. Thanks, Trace. Thanks, Trace.